Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor... ...offering live coverage of special events taking place at the fair this year. Word Alive at the Kentucky State Fair. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers, and I'm standing here uh, at the phone center. We get about a thousand phone calls a week that come in for special prayer. And if you're viewing today and you have a special prayer need, we want to pray for you. That number is right there on the screen. You can call that number, and we'll pray the prayer of faith for God to do a miracle in your life. Now, in just a few minutes, we're going to go into our services, but I, I have something I want to show you. And this is an olive wood uh, carving. You can see the stone here of the tomb. There are the three crosses. There are the people that are there in front of the stone. But uh, this carving uh, is from Bethlehem. This is olive wood. And this is from a center that we have opened our drug uh, rehab alcohol and recovery center right there in Bethlehem. The Russian Mafia has begun to just bring so many drugs into Palestine and into Israel that it is uh, one out of three of the kids are on drugs. And so we have found a place to open a drug, alcohol, and recovery center right there in Bethlehem, and it's in a center that also works with the blind and it works with handicapped people. They have about 30 of these handicapped kids that live there all year round. It's uh, been open for about 50 years and it has excellent offices, a great location and one of the ways they have of supporting it is uh, they make these olive wood carvings and I have uh, a group of these that I've brought back and I want to send this to you. You that can help us in this project with a gift of a hundred dollars or more. And I know $100 is, is, uh, is a lot of money. You can think of a lot of ways to use that. But when you begin to plant that into the gospel, but not only into the gospel, but in the gospel in the Holy Land to help spread the gospel there, I tell you, it is an, an amazing thing. And we'll rush this right to you. You'll get it within just a matter of, of days. And there's the information on the screen how you can receive it. But this will help us in spreading the gospel right in the land of the Bible. And uh, the, to open up a center where people can come in and they're very embarrassed. Uh, the family structure over there to get on drugs is terrible. But there's a new drug coming out that there is no cure. It's called Crocodile. Uh, a lot of these kids that are on heroin, and heroin is the poor man's drug. They get on heroin, then they reach a plateau. They, they want to go a, a step higher. So this drug that uh, is being uh, promoted by the Russian Mafia uh, has no cure. You take it one time and you're addicted. It, it's a death penalty. You take it four times and it, it, it uh, does brain damage, permanent brain damage, and then your skin begins to rot. And that's why they call it crocodile, because it looks like the skin of a crocodile. And it is the death penalty. And we are doing what we can in that part of the world where we're talking about it on television. And uh, I want to rush this to you. This is a carving. It's got, the, it's got the stone, the tomb, the cross. And I know it will be a blessing to you. But right now we're going into our services. So uh, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 1, we will begin our message this morning. 
Once again, let me just declare this, not as a form of flattery, but as a form of appreciation to Pastor Bob and Ms. Margaret for their loyal service to Jesus Christ and their faithfulness to the body of Christ, to the churches all over the world, and for the reputation they carry all over the world as people who love Jesus, love God, love the people of God, and love the kingdom of God. They are a gift to you from God. There is not hardly anywhere in the world that I know of a Pastor Bob or a Miss Margaret that have been through many things in their life, just like all of us have. Everybody here has suffered pain in your life of all kinds. To remain loyal and faithful to the things of God is a great honor to God. It glorifies God and makes Him famous. And our job is to tell the world, no matter what you go through, you just keep serving God because there's only one rock that we can stand on. There's only one person that has the words of everlasting life. Praise the Lord. And Pastor Bob and Ms. Margaret, you know, uh, you don't even know what they've been through in their life. But they love God every day. They do not change with the weather or alter their convictions by a circumstance. They stand steadfast and secure for you and for God and for the body of Christ. And I honor them for that. And I want all of you to be encouraged to pray for them every day, 60 seconds a day. That's one minute a day. But if all of you do it, that's thousands of hours of prayer in one year. Praise the Lord. Would you hug each other and say, if you'll pay me what you owe me, I'll do what he said. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and tell that to your neighbor. I'm not asking for much. You know, you owe me five dollars. Would you pay it back? Praise the Lord. We are preaching this morning about one of the greatest needs that I know of in the body of Christ. The Bible says that there are people who have a form of godliness, but don't have the power. And ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we can go to church and hear a million sermons. But until a sermon takes root, until a sermon produces fruit, until a sermon changes our life, it is just hot air. Every message God gives you in your life, from the moment you come out of your mother's womb till the day you die, is designed by God to help you fulfill your true destiny. Every time you and I disobey what God tells us to do, when he tells us to do it, we deform our destiny by delaying our obedience. God loves you, and he knows you cannot do his will without his help. Right? How many of you know, for example, you cannot love some people? Have you just, have you just concluded that? Have any of you just gotten to that point or just me? That you just simply say, I can't love them. I used to take that as failure. But now God has redefined my perception. And now I take it as the beginning of success. Because I cannot love some people until I know I cannot love them. And then God can love them through me. Until my love is over. His love does not start. Praise the Lord. So if you're married to someone who you've grown out of love with, it's the beginning of your true love life with that person. Because the love of God is supernaturally powerful and cannot wear out, burn out, or be offended out of you. Your love can be offended and you can stop loving a person. But God's love can never stop loving people because it's not based on performance. Amen? Amen? Human love depends on performance to uh, reciprocate, but our love, the love of God in us, does not depend on the performance of a person. They can be the meanest, ugliest person, and the love of God just keeps coming at them. And this is called power. Praise the Lord. How many of you have areas of your life where you are not succeeding the way you know you should? L lift your hands and let everybody see it. Just go, hey, yeah, I've got a couple of areas. How many have failed once in your life? Let me see, just once. Huh? How many of you have had a ministry 
a ministry of failure. Huh? And how many of you have, have cheerleaders that remind you of that? <laughs> failure, 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 failure. Why, why, why? Stop, stop, stop. Change, 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 change. Right? They're there to let you know that they're never going to forget your mistakes. Because here's what I've learned. Your enemies never let you forget your mistakes. And your friends, they never let you forget your potential. Praise the Lord. I don't know how amazing you think you are, but you're more amazing than you think you are. If you're full of vanity, then your amazement is based on a lie. If you're full of humility, then your amazement is based on what God did in you and for you to produce something through you. Praise God. When you stand before God, don't you want to stand there in victory? Huh? How many of you want to stand there and give a testimony and say, you know, God, I almost quit 17,000 times. But your grace, your mercy, your power always was there and always came through for me. Praise the Lord. How many of you want to stand before the Lord and say, there was a church that you put me in, Evangel World Prayer Center. I started out broke, but in that church I learned how to become a millionaire, not for my own selfish greed, but to help the church win souls all around the world. And I was able to pay that church off. I was able to build a children's center or a teenage place. I was able to take care of widows. I was able to feed poor people. I was able to go here or do that. How many of you want to have a testimony of you, your life glorifying God? Lord, I was married to a man that was a bum. He was a true bum in every way of the word. But you fill my heart with love for him. And I prayed for him for 20 years. And after 20 years, he truly became a man of God. And for the next 40 years, we served Jesus together. Don't you want to have that testimony? Praise the Lord. Don't you want to have a testimony that where all your children are saved? And they're all loving God and serving God. And you say, Lord, I've had children. Oh, my gosh. They've stripped my character. They've stripped my ability. They've driven me to insanity. They've made me want to murder, kill, and maim. They've wanted me to change my life, jump off a roof, jump off a bridge, do crazy things. But you always came through for me. Thank you, God. My son, oh, dear Jesus, dear Jesus. He, I mean, he almost drove me to insanity. But then you touched him unexpectedly. You moved your hand over him, God. And he became a weapon in your hand. And now he paid my house off, paid our homes off, built, became, did this, win souls, did this. Because, you know, God, ladies and gentlemen, if you just believe it, God is faithful. God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Acts 1.8. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. How do you know that you only have the form of godliness? and not the power. Because until you have the power, you don't have the substance of the miracles you need. Once the power comes on you, the fruit of power is substance defined by miracles. Praise the Lord. You can have and say, I'm saved. I know Jesus. I'm born again. But until you have the power, you haven't been endued with power. And this week, we're serving a God of power. Huh? Yes. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're a terrible husband. And you know it. Because your wife won't let you forget it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're just the worst husband. Everybody may think you're amazing. Because you smile and hug everybody. And you're great for an hour. You're an hour Christian. You're great at church for an hour. Hey, how you doing? Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. How's it going? Glory to God. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. How's it going, brother? Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. How you doing? But then you go and... All that fake armor and all that plastic stuff comes off and the real wolf and predator and spoiled brat and selfish, self-centered, egotistical maniac comes out. What are you doing with the clicker? Give me that clicker. You're not watching nothing. You're crazy. Get out of the house. Go eat outside. And you, and you say to yourself, wow, am I even a Christian? My gosh, no, you are a Christian, but you're a powerless one that God wants to empower. Praise the Lord. 
hug somebody right now and say, look, I don't know what he's talking about, but if you'll just give me the money you owe me, I'll consider myself blessed for this service. He's got to stop talking. You see, when you're depressed and on uh, prescription drugs and you can't get off of them and you sit here in this service and you hear people give their testimonies or sing or, 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 or uh, you know, hear preachers preach and declare all these wonderful things and you sit there year after year on these medications and year after year you're fighting loneliness or depression or you have these lusts inside you and these desires to chase women or chase men or chase something, or not chase anything. You're just like shriveled up, and you're only 25. You've only been married for two years. You're in trouble. You need some power. Or you face a pie, the worst enemy of all. You face a living, talking pie. Apple pie, peach pie, cinnamon pie. And those foods are prophesying to you. They're not dead foods, they're living foods. They're like prophetic foods. They're there, I am a Cinnabon. Eat me, eat me, eat me. I will bring you joy. I will bring you happiness. I'm much better than a sermon. I'm much better than a message. I'm much better than the Bible. You may wait for years to get satisfaction from the Bible, but if you eat me, you'll get happy right now. Come on, do it. Eat me! And you, because you know it's true, because Cinnabon doesn't lie. Apple pies don't lie. They lie. They don't lie. They tell the truth. Spaghetti doesn't lie. Lasagna doesn't lie. They all tell the truth. I will make you happy now. Not in the future. Not in 20 years. Right now. It may not. Right? If it wasn't true, we'd never do it. We would just be disciplined. Oh, I'm fasting for 40 days. Again. But isn't it funny that Christians go on these fasts, like Daniel fasts, for example, and they gain weight? Well, what, what, what? This strikes me as funny. You went on a 40-day fast and gained 15 pounds. Now, how does that happen? I don't know. It's my metabolism. <laughs> Your metabolism at two or three in the morning when you're sneaking down there and opening the refrigerator and your wife says, who ate all the food? We're on a fast. I don't know. We must have a rat around. Right? Because we are the slaves of our weaknesses. And God came to empower us and give us victory. And the only worthwhile thing to do is to serve a God of power. Amen. Not just a form, but of power. Yes. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. We don't want a religious God. Right. We want a power God. I need God that heals cancers. I need a God that opens blind eyes. I need a God that does the impossible, that I cannot do that changes the lives of my family, that transforms the lives of my friends, that gets people out of debt, that pays their houses off. Wouldn't it be a great testimony if you were able to stand up and say, look, I was so broke, and I got somebody gave me a house. Gave me a house. Look at two people and say, huh? Who did that? Wouldn't you want somebody to pay your house off? Huh? This year we've had 28 miracle births already. A miracle birth is a woman who cannot have a child after 10 to 15 years and then miraculously is able to have children. Praise the Lord. Cancers have been healed of every kind because we are serving the God of power. You're not guaranteed, however, the God of power if you just have the clothing of salvation without the anointing of salvation. You have to be honest enough to tell yourself the truth. You, you have to tell yourself the truth. God cannot begin with a lie. He cannot help you. He cannot help me if I lie to myself and say, I'm doing fine. I'm great. God doesn't, people may need to hear that, but God doesn't need to hear that. God needs to hear help. 
I cannot do the right thing in this area. I need power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God anoints people with power. I did a, a study, which we're going to do tonight and Monday and Tuesday and this morning, on, on the kinds of power that is available to you and me. And everybody watching on TV and on radio, I want to encourage all of you to come to Evangel tonight uh, to the Billtown Road um, Church. And 16 kinds of power available to you. I wonder how much of that power we are actually walking in. Every area of defeat is an area of deception. Wherever you're defeated, the devil has created a justification for that defeat and blame God for it. God doesn't want you to say something that's not true. He just wants you to need him. Jesus said it best, I can of my own self do nothing. That's Jesus talking, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jesus talking. Jesus himself, who could raise the dead and walk on water, who could steal the storm, and he said, I know my source. The question is, do we know ours? What do we do to love mean people? How do Christians love mean people? We avoid them. Oh, yeah, I love him. When's the last time you talked to him? Fifteen years, but I love him. <laughs> we avoid in order to claim victory. God is not afraid of the imperfections of the people that are in your life. But I am. I am. Because I know that in myself I have limits. I have all these orphans, ladies and gentlemen, that God has given me the honor of having. They come to us, little babies, a two-year-old, they just gave her to us, beautiful dimples. They gave her to us because her stepfather was molesting her at two years old. How do you do that? What kind of animal? Rage would rise up in me when they would bring us these children. And I had the spirit of murder come on me. And I would be asking people for the address of this person. I'm saying, I'm going to call all my cowboy friends. And they already told me, we'll kill anybody you want us to kill. And these are all pastors. <laughs> we'll kill them all. And the Lord said something to me. He says, Ivan... Your response is justifiably human. But spiritually crippling. He says, if these children see you hate them, they're predators. If they see you hate them, they will never be free from what those people did. He said, instantly, don't ever show them that again. Walk in love so that I can heal them, they can forget, and they can go on. And at that moment, I was freed. That's power. Power is the ability to walk away from your weakness and never meet it again. How many have ever been embarrassed by your behavior? Huh? Have any of you ever done anything crazy? Hmm? Right? Because there's Medea Christians. You know Medea there on, on, on TV? You know, she's, she kind of praises the Lord or Medina. What's her name? Medea. Yeah. And, and then, but she beats people up and throws people around. But I happen to love it. And she just beats everybody up. A, a, a pastor and I were watching a revenge movie, you know, and feeling very good about it. And I, I, I looked at him and said, why do we like this? And then it, the Lord told me, he said, because they're doing everything we wish we could do, but can't do. So we have to live our lives through them and get even with people through the movie. Huh? There's a reason you love John Wayne. He knocks people out. It's a fantasy of all men to be able to knock other people out. But when you become a Christian, you have to exchange power. 
Isaiah 40, I will exchange my power for your weakness. Praise God. Do you believe that your life can get better? Do you believe it needs to get better? Because we can play a church game even in a spirit-filled church. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I mean this. There are not very many people like Pastor Bob and Ms. Margaret, honestly. Pastor Bob is a supernatural man. You just saw him. The ears of the child opened up. Most pastors would never do that. I go to churches where they don't even give altar calls. They have thousands of people. They'll never pray for anybody. But they will. They'll believe God. But just because you're in a church with a godly pastor and a godly pastor's wife doesn't mean that you're godly. Just because they preach to you the truth and give you all the, the opportunities doesn't mean you're taking them. How are things going to change for you today? You've got to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen out there watching, you've got to be honest. There's got to be a day when you say, this is enough, I'm done. We never change what we are willing to tolerate. You never change what you're willing to tolerate. And whatever you tolerate, you cultivate it. Don't put up with a miserable home. Don't put up with pain in your body that you don't need to have. Don't put up with a bank account that's empty when God says it doesn't have to be. Don't put up with prejudice that is unnecessary. This is a, 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 a multicultural church. It doesn't have to be. It's this way because you know something. You know that Bob Rogers and Margaret love every person, every individual, every color, every creed, every culture, and every language. And you're confident of it or you wouldn't be in this church. And that's why this church has made Jesus famous. That's right. And that's the only kind of church there's in heaven. Remember, there's no white sections in heaven. There ain't no black sections, no brown sections, no yellow sections, no nothing. You don't get to go to heaven and say, show me my people. Because they'll stick you right in the middle of the kind of folks you don't like. For all of eternity. You'll never see another white person. Never see another black person. So, I'm making that up, but it sounds good. You say, oh, I'm, I'm going through a lot of stuff, Ivan. I, I've got a lot of issues, you know. Uh, my husband, I, I move. You know, I, I, I've been, I prayed for him for a few years. I asked God to save him or do this. Now, I lay hands on him when he's sleeping, and all I say is, die, 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 die. I have problems. I'm finding myself cussing out people, and I'm a Christian. I come to church, and all my fingers are gone because I threw them at people on the way to church. You know you need some power. I'm addicted to the TV. That's all I want to do. I just want you to shut up so I can go home. I don't even read the Bible anymore. Why? Because the body of Christ in many places is overfed and underused. Unobeyed truth creates sterility in your spirit. The more sermons you hear, that you don't apply, the more sterile you become to the Word of God. Now you're just going to sit there till everything's done and then go and say, we go to church on Sunday. Do you, do, does anybody really believe going to church on Sunday is all that God wants? No, God wants to save Louisville, Kentucky. He wants to save your mama and your daddy and your brothers and your sisters. And he wants you all to be happy and blessed. But God knows that happiness ends when you start seeking it. And happiness begins when you start giving it. Don't wait to be happy to give happiness. Create happiness for people that are more miserable than you are and you'll start being happy. That's the remedy Jesus gave. Do unto others as you would have them do 
unto you. Power. Wonder working power. Come on, everybody. Look at somebody and say, is that your original hair color? Come on, just look at them and say, is that your original hair color? Come on, shake their hand and say, <clears throat> is that your actual hair? <laughs> See, you may have a background of rejection. You may say, you know, I've never been loved. Well, that probably is true because you are actually an orphan with parents. You actually act like an orphan because you have never had the power of God touch your heart and reform it. But you know that one day, somewhere along your journey, you have got to have an encounter with God where He changes your heart and you no longer are an orphan? Once you stop being an orphan, you start acting like a son or a daughter of your dad. Praise the Lord. Look at three people right now and say, I just need half of what you owe me right now. Just half. Give me $10. You owe me $20. I just need $10. Go ahead. Look at the person next to you. I need you $10. Because I ain't getting nothing out of this. Praise the Lord. Come on. Raise your hand and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, I was an orphan, ladies and gentlemen. I felt like an orphan all my life. Truly, I did. I didn't want to be one. I didn't start it. It's just where I was raised the way I was raised. I'm half Mexican, half Scottish, raised with black folks. This will give you schizophrenia for sure. You know, your mother's singing in Spanish, your dad's got his kilt on, and... It's, 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 and then Levi and Chester are coming over, and it's a weird deal, let me tell you, I promise you, and it, it freaks your brain out, but at 17, when I got saved, God said, all your deficiencies will now become your assets, I said, what do you mean, how many languages do you speak, I said, I speak two, he says, that's an asset, Now I can speak to the whole world in English or Spanish. And maybe other things. You never know. <laughs> Look at two people and go, Urken Vishka El Tevedutsen. Go ahead and tell them. <laughs> Come on, raise your right hand and go, Mumbulu Chuaga. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand. Yala Mambu Yetu Muye. Come on, you can do it. Yesu, Yesu Mawa Munde. Awame de. Come on, you can do this. No? Have I lost you? So, here you are today. Another trip to church. Another opportunity for God to change you. The question is, will you stay the same? Will your wife have to repeat those famous words? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Will your husband have to say to you again, Are you crazy? <laughs> have you lost your mind? You can't do that. Have you ever done anything that you couldn't do, that you shouldn't do? Huh? How many times have you just gone crazy? and flipped out. People were denying they even knew you. Who's that? I don't know. She just flipped out. I'm just buying groceries. I don't know her. Why? Because we have the form. We have the form. We have the hallelujahs. We have the praise God. We have the talahala. We have the shanna malamba. But the question is, do we have the power? Because the truth is, your children will never truly love God if they do not see at home what comes out of your mouth at church. And you can feel bad. You can feel sorry for yourself. Can I ask you a question? How long do you feel sorry for yourself before it feels good? 
an hour? Is an hour of self-pity self -pity enough? And then you go, man, that was good. Because <laughs> if you smoke a reefer, it's right away. It's, <laughs> That's understandable. There's no insanity to smoking reefers. If you, if you take drug, cocaine, right away. Mm. There ain't, ain't no delay. If you have sex, if you do this, if you do, there's instant gratification. That's why you do it. But self-pity? When? An hour? A week? A year? It's a bottomless pit. It's actually emotional perversion. It's how the devil keeps you from your destiny by making you the intellectual victim of all humans on planet earth. But God gives you power and raises you from the dust and gives you something that no one else can give you. And that is the ability to succeed where all you can do is fail. Hala hala. Come on, raise your right hand and look at your neighbor and say, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Now, husband, sing it to your wife. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You don't sing it to me. Make me happy when skies are gray. Come on, husband. Don't, you're singing to me. Never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Now, husbands, wrap your arm around them, and we're going to move in. Please don't take... Come on, brothers. Please don't. You haven't kissed her in four years, so come on. Please don't take. I'm giving you a chance to resurrect the dead. Come on, men. Please don't take my son. Come on, resurrect that. Please don't take. You're moving in, moving in. My son. Why are you looking at me? Please don't take my son. You should be about an inch away from me now now smack 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 <laughs> alright ladies you know the song we sing it every year put your hand on your husband and say husband if there's ever been a song I've ever meant it's this one Give me some money, honey, honey. Give me some dough, clap your hands. Give me some money, honey, honey. Give me some dough. Give me some money, honey, honey. Give me some dough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me some money, honey, honey. Give me some dough. Second verse. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Hallelujah. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Hallelujah. Send me to Hawaii, honey. You don't have to go. Whoa, whoa. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Hallelujah. I know where you hide your wallet. I know where you keep your wallet. I know where you stash your money. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Hallelujah. I'll steal everything you ever hit anywhere. Send me to Hawaii, honey. Power. Wonder working power. Praise the Lord. Don't you want to have some testimonies? Don't you want to have some miracles? Don't you want to be able to tell people God can straighten that arm? God can untwist that heart? God can heal your soul? God can repair your past? God can make you a weapon? God can change your marriage? God can restore your finances? God can put his hand on your business and make it a million dollar business? God can heal the church? God can pay off all the buildings? God can pay off all the lands? God can do things he's never done before? Don't you want to have a testimony? Maybe he could even give you hair. Wouldn't that bring honor to God?
said, man, I was bald and now I have hair. The Lord has done great things. Sometimes we think, why? God wouldn't give you hair. Of course he would give you hair if it matters to you. If it doesn't matter, why would he do a miracle he, you don't even care about? But if you want hair, he may give you hair. I've seen God give people hair. I've seen fingernails grow in, on people's uh, uh, fingers. Things have got to change. Right? Right? You got to lose the crazy. The sadness has got to go. The grief has got to go. The lack of joy has got to go. The dependency on things has got to go. The addictions have got to go. The bondages have got to go. The fear, the lack of sleep, the tortures and torments have got to go. The failures of the past, the lusts, the hungers for bad things have got to go. Well, there is a God of power. And he wants to give you that power. We're going to talk about it tonight, 5 o'clock. We should be done by probably 5, 6, 6.30 or 7. That's praying for people flowing in the Holy Ghost because i got double barrels with Gavin. He's got a gift of miracles. A lot of powerful stuff will happen. Let's be there at the uh, Billtown uh, campus at 5 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Say, so, well, I you know, I don't really do that. I don't go to church. I mean, once all I can, once is all, I mean, I can just handle you one time. I can hand you one service a year. Why? Because perhaps you're overfed and underused. And perhaps your expector is broken. So why would you go to something you already know is not going to change your life? You would rather do something that gratifies you instantly. As I would and everybody would. But let's honor God. Praise the Lord. Give somebody a high five right now and say, I think your hair's growing out. I, I see something right there. I see a hair shooting out right there. Praise the Lord. Is it my imagination? Close your eyes for a moment, everybody. Put on the music and let's think about Jesus. There is a heaven. There is a bridge to heaven. Everybody here has an opportunity right now for one thing. If you died today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? Can you say, I have absolutely no doubts that if I was to die right now, I would go to heaven. Can you say, if I lay down and die tonight, I know beyond any doubt that I'm going to go to heaven. There's many here who don't. Many here who don't. But God wants you to. He wants you to know in your heart. You cannot buy that peace. There's no store you can go to. There's no individual that can give it to you. That peace can only be given by God to those that sincerely ask Him for it. But once you have it, it changes your world. So here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. If you are here and you're not sure you're going to heaven, you're not 100% sure, and you want that peace in your heart, all I want you to do is to simply lift your hand high enough for me to see right where you're at and then I'm going to pray for you and God is going to give you that peace. Praise the Lord. Lift your hand high with no shame. I see your hands going up there, 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 and up at the top. Lift it high with no shame. There, 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 there. You're making a wise choice. You're making the first step to a life filled with power. Not just with a form, but with power. Now, 
I'm not going to embarrass you or make you say anything. I'd actually just want you to stand right where you're at if you could. If you lifted your hands, stand right up. All of you that lifted your hands, I want to see you and I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to ask God to give you this miracle of peace which cannot be bought. Now, everyone standing at the top and down here, would you look at me for one second? May I have the honor and privilege, and may I have your permission to pray for you? If I do, would you simply wave your hand at me? May I? May I pray for you? I, I have your permission because it's my honor to do that. Here's what I'd like to do. May I look at you for a minute? If I could, would you just walk out of that chair as fast as you can and stand here, and then I'll let you sit down. Come right back up right here. Give them a hand as they're coming. And walk up here because it's very important. I just want to look at you when I pray. Give them a hand like your mama's coming up here. Give them a hand like your mama's coming up here. Praise the Lord. Now that's not clapping like your mama's coming up here. I, come on. Just walk right up here. Clap like your mama's coming up. Say, because you know that this is somebody's mother somebody's son, somebody's brother, sister, uncle, aunt, someone loves these people. And if no one loves them on earth, someone loves them from heaven. Praise the Lord. And I know that some of you have things in your life that you're hoping will fall right, right now, fall out. And they are. They're going to fall off you right now. You know, people can say, I forgive you. But if you hurt them deeply enough, they'll never forget it. And they'll always be guarded. When God forgives you, He gives Himself amnesia. And He can never again remember what it was that you did that makes you feel guilty or ashamed. It's gone. It's gone. Your trial and your sins and transgressions are being judged now. And the judgment and the lawyer you hired, named Jesus, when you walked up here, is related to the judge. They already worked out your deal. And here's what the sentence is. You are acquitted. Your rap sheet is torn up, and you get to go home free today from everything you've ever done up till today. Your name will be put in the book of life. And the peace of God will abide in your heart as the proof of the miracle that has taken place today. The Spirit of God is speaking to me now, and I'm going to respond to it while they're up here. There are seven people sitting out there that need to be up here. You know you're not sure. You didn't get up, but you should have. I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is making it very clear right now that coming up here is necessary. Because public confession of an eternal uh, blessing is necessary. And so, seven people, here's what I want you to do. If you know you're one of those people, you say, I should have done that, I should have gone up there. I'm going to ask you to get up right now and walk up here and let my heart be full and the heart of God full, knowing that you're going to be at peace with God and right with God. So I'm going to wait for you and see if the seven of you will come up that I heard the Holy Ghost tell me. Praise the Lord. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. There can be more. There can be more. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. We should never get used to miracles. We should never get used to the move of God. Everybody stretch your hands out here. If you're watching on TV, and we're still on, if you're watching on TV, and you're sitting in your home or living room, or watching on your computer somewhere, and you said, I wish I was there so I could go forward, I'm including you in this invitation, and including you in this prayer. But you need to come to the service so that my son and I can pray for you and minister to you and God can give you a miracle for whatever area of your life 
you need. Can we all pray now? What is it going to take for this to happen? Here's what it takes. You have been hurt by someone sometimes. You need to forgive those people. God is going to forgive you for everything. He says, if you'll forgive them, I'll forgive you. Secondly, you have to forgive the worst, most difficult person in the world to forgive. And that is yourself. That is yourself. You know how hard it's to do that. Sometimes we think it's honorable to suffer. But Jesus paid the price. He doesn't need our help. It's complete. So you need to forgive yourself. You know that you are not forgiven because you're angry. Anger is the sign of unforgiveness. It's when you know that you have not forgiven yourself and that you have not forgiven other people. And you get mad about it and you don't even know why. A soul of peace is a soul at peace. A soul of peace is a soul at peace. So let's all get at peace. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands out to them that are here. If anybody else needs to come up, and you said, man, I should have done that, you need to get up and run up here. Literally. You literally need to get up and run up here. And then I'm going to pray. Are you ready? Jesus, please forgive me for all that I have ever done. Everything I've ever done against my own conscience in, in, in anger or in pain, please forgive me. I forgive the people who have hurt me and I also forgive myself. Thank you, Jesus, that I am forgiven and that I am free from all my failures and all of my weaknesses. But you do not hold them up. They are out of your mind and out of your memory book. All my debts have now been paid. I can start brand new. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life so that when I die, I will go to heaven. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to heaven. I'm forgiven. Oh my gosh. I am not guilty. I am not guilty. Come on, church, say it. I am not guilty. Everybody, I am not guilty. I am not guilty. Praise the Lord. Now all you guys up here, turn around and face this church and say it with your hands lifted up. I'm free. I am not guilty. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can I present to you these men and women and children that have been forgiven? Their names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. They are not guilty. They have been acquitted. They are forgiven and they are going to go to heaven. God will give them power. Power, power, power in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a big hand and praise His holy name. Now, turn, turn around this way, everybody. Turn around this way and look right at me. Extend your hands towards me, just like this. This is a, a point of agreement and contact. You know, like when you lift your hands up, and you all can sit down out there. When you lift your hands up, somebody has a gun to your back, you're, you're giving them a message, I'm not going to resist. When you go like this, you say, I'm giving you something or I'm receiving something. I break the curses that were put on your life and I declare you to no longer be cursed. No longer frustrated, no longer sick, no longer the slave of any chemical, any person, any circumstance, or any memory. I now declare that your past is gone and that you can rewrite your future and put the pen in God's hand which is your will, put it in his hand and let him write you a life that will defy 
your past. Everybody give the Lord a hand and praise His name. They're going to give you a gift. I want you to follow Him for a few minutes. Follow Him right out there. Everybody walk right out there. Give them a hand as they go right out there and they'll be right out. They're going to give them a little gift. Praise the Lord. Let's all praise the Lord for that. Come on. Say, there is power to save a soul. There is power for blessings to take place. If you have a special prayer need, you can call us. That number is right there on the screen. And you call us and we're going to pray for you. Before we go, though, I want to mention, I hold in my hand the carving. And this is a carving of, of uh, olive wood. It's by actually special needs people. And we have opened a drug center right there in Bethlehem. And uh, it's in this center where there's a couple of other um, ministry groups. And uh, this is one of the carvings that they do. This is the tomb and uh, the cross of Calvary. And I want to send this to those who can help us. For a gift of $100 or more, I'll rush this to you. And it helps us to spread the gospel right there in Israel. Drugs are coming in. The Russian mafia are getting those drugs in. And it's terrible. One out of three teenagers are now being bound by drugs. And, and uh, we have the answer in the name of Jesus. Uh, the information is right there, how you can contact us. And I'll, I'm waiting to hear from you. God bless you and thanks for viewing today on Word Alive. by the Red Sea Shore. Pharaoh knows I can't run no more. Water is way too deep and wide. They can't swim and they can't hide. But though he was just a man, Moses raised his hand. The Lord came through. He heard their cry. is a production of Bob Rogers Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky. For more information on the outreach of this ministry or to become a partner, visit bobrogersministries.org. And remember to like us on Facebook and Ustream, just search TV Word Alive. Do you have the right Medicare health plan? Are you saving money? And are you with a company you can rely on? The answer to your questions could be a Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from Humana with the benefits and savings you want. You can get all the facts in this free booklet, Making Medicare Supplement Insurance Work for You. And it's yours just by calling 1-888-238-5497. For a competitive monthly premium, you get peace of mind knowing many of your medical costs will be covered. All from a company that's been helping people with Medicare for more than 20 years. And with a Medicare supplement plan like that offered by Humana, you always have the freedom to go to any doctor, specialist, or hospital. The booklet is free and there's no obligation. So call now. 1-888-238-5497. That's 1-888-238-5497. Hey folks, it's Troy with Shop 21 Live, and I want to tell you about the summer's best deal in golf. 
It's the 2013 Bluegrass Golf Tour card. For $99, you're gonna get this card that'll give you access to eight great golf courses. That's a $530 value for only $99. Come see us today at shop21live.com.